2017. We meet the Dutch molecular geneticist Hans Klevers at his institute in Utrecht. Klevers cultivates human organs there in miniature format. The pin-sized cell clumps are called organoids. My vision is that just like a blood bank, we have an organoid bank. And if someone needs a new liver, for instance, we can look in the organoid bank and say, OK, this tube is best for your liver. We then thaw it out and administer it to the patient. He goes back home and the stem cells start regenerating his liver. Because stem cells are very good at doing just that. Big dreams, but can they stand up to reality? Three years later, we speak to the researcher again. I'm sure that over the next years we'll see the first version of using these organoids to repair organs. Organoids are in fact due to be tested on humans for the first time this year. A team from Japan wants to use them to treat patients with incurable intestinal infections. Preliminary studies have already been successful. We actually had an experiment published where we took one stem cell, 10 micrometers, extremely small. Uh, that one stem cell we grew up to 100 million cells. They were then sent to Tokyo, frozen. You can freeze and thaw it quite easily. And they were transplanted to about 40 mice with um, inflammatory bowel disease. And in all 40 mice, they helped cure the lesions in the gut, these ulcers in the, in the colon. And um, that already showed the, that the principle could work. So will organoids soon be able to repair injuries inside our bodies? Klavers laid the foundations for this new therapy in 2006. The intestine renews its entire surface every two to four days. No other human organ regenerates faster. Klavers and his team find out how the intestine does this. Special cell types, deeply hidden inside the mucous membrane, ensure constant regeneration, so-called adult stem cells. Klavers and his team are the first to track down the stem cells using a complicated staining technique, shown in green in this photo. And that's not all. Shortly afterwards, they even managed to grow the special cells in the laboratory. It's very visual. You see it through a microscope, and the moment you see that image, you realize this is it. This is... And I so still, if I think about everything else that happened, we had many, many papers using organoids in very many different ways. But those were always the consequences of those two discoveries. The discoveries quickly lead to concrete applications. Take cystic fibrosis, for example. Various medications are available to treat the metabolic disease. The problem is that the remedies are not only expensive, their effect differs from patient to patient. So Clavers starts by testing the active substances on organoids he has grown from the patient's tissue. This saves money, and for the patients, it's far less stressful. We now have about half of all Dutch cystic fibrosis patients we have represented in our biobank. It's about 700. Uh, there are new methods to repair the, the gene defects of these patients. We very, very recently, just a month or so ago, published a paper uh, with so-called CRISPR base editing, very advanced technique, where we could repair very specifically the, the DNA changes, the DNA errors in, in, in stem cells of these patients. Another field of application is the testing of new drugs and chemicals. Since research and industry are testing more and more active substances using organoids, it is increasingly possible to dispense with animal testing. In the whole drug development process, from, from the first basic discovery to developing compounds, to testing if they work, to testing if they are toxic, that whole process can probably be be carried by organoid technology better than any other previous technology. According to Clavers, the main reason why all these diverse applications came about was because the researchers had had the technology patented early on. And then, through a non-profit institute called the Hub, Hub for Organoids, had made it available to science and industry in the form of paid licenses. 
the Patent Office guided them throughout the process. What we do is as soon as we have a discovery that would be patentable, we write a paper. And then when the paper is written, our patent lawyers convert that paper into a patent application. And while our paper is being reviewed, which you know, usually takes multiple weeks or a few months, we can file you know, a good patent, a well-written patent. It doesn't delay us at all. Sometimes it even inspires us because it, the patent lawyers give us ideas back. They say, you really haven't proven this, or have you thought about that, or that would be novel you do this. So there's, in that sense, it's also scientifically very interesting to go through this whole, uh, yeah, this whole exercise. So the further development of organoids is making rapid progress. The clinical trials in Japan have been delayed by the corona crisis, but there's still a good chance that organoids will very soon be repairing sick organs inside our bodies. <laughs>